there are uh, uh, problems associated at all field strengths with MR images, and one of those problems is caused by the magnetic susceptibility of the tissue itself. Uh, essentially, tissue is very water-like and has a magnetic susceptibility, I think, of minus 10 parts per million, whereas the surrounding air has a susceptibility of zero. So when these two types of material come together, you get a magnetic field gradient between the two, particularly in the frontal lobes and around the ears, and that distorts the images, particularly echoplanar images, which are obtained with a very low bandwidth per point. The distortion is dramatic around the frontal lobes. The solutions are hard to come by. Uh, one could uh, introduce magnetic material around the head to try to uh, reduce those gradients, and people have been trying that, uh, particularly the Oxford group. Um, uh, you could put things in people's mouths to, to try to uh, do the same thing around the, br the brain stem. But none of the solutions are, uh, are perfect. Um, they, they, all, they may improve the situation, but we're still working on further solutions. The problems, however, with high field magnets are much more to do with the properties of the tissue itself and the high frequencies that you are using in order to, uh, um, to produce the image. So when we get to 40 and particularly 70, uh, the dielectric properties of the tissue uh, mean that we have uh, what's called a field focusing effect. The field um, is uh, it's a bit like um, uh, an optical lens which focuses light. Uh, the, the head being a spherical object, uh, when, it, when you uh, apply radio frequency field to it, uh, you, can, you can get destructive and constructive interference caused by the waves arriving at different times in different parts of the head which causes severe differences in the signal intensity uh, throughout the image. So they're very non-uniform images. But uh, I felt that 4.70 uh, offered um, the, uh, perhaps the optimum field strength for, for a number of purposes. Um, I was pretty sure that we could develop MR imaging techniques to overcome the field focusing effect of that's the problem with with high field magnets. That effect has still not been overcome at 7T, but we have overcome it at 4.7T. And so that, in some way, vindicates my decision. You know, it's, it's the field strength where I could solve the problem, you know, and even to this day, Nottingham with their 7T magnet are still working on the problem. Minnesota have worked on it for five years and not solved the problem. You know, all these people are buying 7T systems but there's a problem that they haven't solved. I think there's going to be 20, 30, uh, 70 systems very soon around the world. But they all have to face the field focusing effect as their main source of not producing uniform MR images. Well, what I was really trying to do was to convince the world that the optimum field strength for looking at the human brain was indeed 4.70. So all the methodology on imaging was designed to produce the highest resolution, the best quality images we could within a five minute scan. And all the methodology in spectroscopy was to overcome the problems of high field and produce the sharpest, most localized uh, spectra that we could of the highest quality. It was then my hope that we could actually uh, sell these techniques to all the neuroscientists around Queen Square and start uh, um, really showing the world that uh, 4.70 was a great um, choice as, as an MR system. However, uh, it took three or four years to develop those techniques, and the machine was really quite unreliable in a way because it was made by a scientific instrument maker. It wasn't built for reliability like a commercial machine is. And so we found it very difficult to, to actually uh, translate that work into clinical studies because the machine just kept breaking on a too regular basis.